All right. Welcome to my channel, everybody. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to drop by. I'm going to be covering some tips and tricks for the game Nightingale. If you've seen any of my other videos, you probably have already seen a tips and tricks video. Although, unfortunately, I had some audio issues and such there that I didn't really enjoy very much. So, George, can you please get out of my face? Uh, so we're going to be redoing it, and I'm going to be adding some new ones and such, too, because there were some changes and updates and such to the release build that we were given so i'm going to include some of the newer ones there and then of course i'll be trying to do a separate video here talking about all of the new stuff that they include in the new build and uh, like the ui and all that so technically this one will currently be based off of the old build of the game uh you'll probably notice that with the ui changes and such like i have hope on this menu and so forth my ui looks different than the new build and the pictures you might have seen so keep that in mind, like I said prior, you know, it will be a bit different at release. So, hey guys, Future Rack here. I just wanted to jump in really quickly and apologize with how long this video is. Went into a lot more depth than I really intended with it. You guys could hang out and check it out. There's a lot of really good information in it. If not, I fully understand. But instead of sitting here making it even longer and longer, you guys have a good one and enjoy the video. Skipping past all that at this point, thank you again very much to you guys and also to Inflection for having me on for so long and being such a great team to work with over the time that I've helped them with development or ideas or whatever the case is. They've been they've been really, really great. If you guys could drop a like, a follow, a subscribe or whatever on you know YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, wherever you want, it'd be great. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into some of the things with the game. All right, one of the first things we're gonna look at is holding E on individual items in your base and so forth, like trunks or boxes and all that. If you hold E, you have a different option to rename or open menu. Just gives you more options to different things. You can utilize renaming baskets, you know, in the world or whatever you wanna do if you wanna keep track of something. Do it on your bed, you'll be able to choose something like long or short rests. Uh, if you go to benches, you'll be able to utilize like an inspection system to see what's affecting the benches overall. All right. Next up, we are going to talk about the portals and such that you can have at your base that you can build and so forth. When you do spawn a portal here, well, when you create one, spawn it, whatever, and you do make a portal with your biome cards and major cards and that kind of stuff, Make sure that once you do that, you come to the side, you hold E and you rename it to whatever card you used because it doesn't tend to like, doesn't change its name, etc. And you can kind of forget which portal you spawned on that particular platform. So it's just a quick little, you know, tip to kind of do so you can keep track of things. Of course, if you are wanting to change the difficulty when you spawn a portal, you can do that here as well. If you want to create a public realm, you can do that. However, keep in mind that you will have to use your travel to respite back because there will not be a portal to get back to your private realm. The only way for someone to match you into a public realm is if they play the same cards and it's on public, of course. So you won't have to worry about any kind of situations there. Obviously, do not give anybody access to your realm. Don't bring in anybody to your realm like a, a friend or whatnot unless you trust them because they will have full access to your realm and to everything in it and can do it with what they want. So keep that in mind at that current state of the game that you want to be careful how you treat that. Now, of course, they did implement a new feature uh, with this last uh, post update thing that they did. So if you want to open, let's say you have a realm that you, you opened and then you wanted to spawn a different realm, so you spawn a different one. And then you wanted to go back to the original realm that you created a while back. What you can do is you can always come back to your portal. You can play the same cards and it will, as long as it's the same character that spawned the portal, it will open the portal to, sorry, the realm, to to the realm that you had prior, so that you can go back there and finish up stuff, or do other stuff there if you want, or like, you know, gather resources, or whatever it is that you left there. Now, what you can do, though, if you don't want to do that, is you can easily just tick the box here to reset the realm, and you'll get a completely fresh wiped realm. As I was saying prior to when you hold E on baskets and such to rename them, if you're on the world and you find a portal that you can utilize in some form, they don't really rename themselves or anything like that either. You can always just throw a basket out there really quick and just rename the basket to whatever realm cards you played on it. So that way you know where that realm will be when you go back to it later on. All right. One particular thing that I tend to see a lot of people kind of overlook or not even realize, and it took me a very long time to figure it out myself, is 
normally when you're going through the game and you're picking up items, you aim at them, you hit E, you pick it up, that type of thing, you know, the usual type of thing with survival games. However, there is an option in this game where if you just hold E, you can actually pick up in a wide range around you, just automatically picks up everything in the vicinity around you. And the vicinity is rather large, as you can see there. So it's really, really important to kind of speed along your, your, your crafting or your survival, whatever you're trying to do with doing that. So make sure you use that as often as possible. Of course, another important note is that while you are adventuring in the realms and so forth, you do have three individual, like I said, this UI does not look the same on the new version, but you will have three little circles here for your buffs. These are for your food buffs and so forth, and you can have three different ones going. You're going to want to keep those going as often as possible because they will all have different things. The meat may look the same that you're crafting and so forth, but they will all have different stats. Some will give you more health regen, some will give you more stamina, some will give you more health, so on and so forth. So you can go through each individual one and craft and, you know, create and combine different ones to figure out which way you want to build your character or what you want to wa walk around with with different materials or, you know, however you want to do with your building your, your stats. So really, really important to keep those going as often as possible. Make sure you are always carrying something like healing salve on you. This will definitely save your bacon quite a few times in the game. Or, you know, if you end up falling off a cliff or hurting yourself or something like that, this will definitely speed things along. Uh, it's pretty simple to craft. And of course, it's like I said, it's really, really important to keep it on you at all times. And it, I mean, it barely really takes that much. You'll probably, you'll, you know, you'll need other advanced portions later on of course and there will be potions and stuff like that to help you too but as you're beginning into the game something you really really want to keep on you another one that is quite often overlooked or not realized till later on in the game and it's really 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 important is while you're you're harvesting and picking up everything and so forth you're going to notice a lot of icons that look identical starting off into the early access that's simple is because they are somewhat identical. However, they will all have different stats attached to them. So like these straps right here, for example, were made with a tier one predator pelt. So they give max health, health regen, and cold resist. These ones are tier one Everheart deer. These ones actually have four different multipliers here with stam, regen, movement speed, and cold resist. So whatever materials you use to craft something, it will change their stats. So if I go to my bench here and I go to craft something like this and auto fill it, it's just going to put whatever I have in my inventory that's available into the slots and you can see what the stats are here. However, if I want to change them, you can see that if I hover over a different ones, some of them are just going to kind of be the same depending on what type of item you're crafting. You know, it might not add stats to it or whatnot, but majority of them will change the stat layouts that, of whatever you're trying to make. So if I was to change this to the predator pelt, well, I would get more health now. I don't think I have any other, yeah, I don't have any other plant fiber on me currently, but it will do that with pretty much any of the different structures and different things that you're trying to craft. Uh, let's see, we have, we'll autofill this here. So these are pretty much all the same when it comes to making a sling bow for me. And these ones, yeah, well, if I use, I mean, I could use a little bit higher quality wood, get a little bit higher of a crit damage on it if I was to use the, the better wood that I have so really really important it does also change how they look as you get further into the game so something else that's really important keep an eye on those mats make sure you keep a lot of them on hand of course you will have to be doing a lot of sorting because there will be a lot of duplicate looking icons and such so you're gonna have to sort out stuff fairly often beds workbenches and pretty much anything that you use inside your base or outside your base is all affected by different things in the world uh your bed will have different negatives or positives if it's outside of a you know your actual home or something like that it'll give you more bonuses if it's well lit give you more comfort when you sleep on it the same thing goes for benches so if you go to your bench you inspect it you're going to see that there's either negatives unfortunately this this build with this house right here was not registering as an inside, but if you have it inside or if you have it well lit or whatever the case is, you will get more buffs and bonuses to those benches and so forth. So it's really, really important to consider that while you are actually building or crafting or whatever you're doing. As you get out of the tutorial and such, your first thing will be to find a site of power. Now the sites of power are restricted by gear score. There are different types of site of power. And 
usually what I do is I kind of follow along the little story missions and such and kind of follow throughout the path to get to those gear score requirements to go to the next one because they are part of your progression. However, usually when I first start to and get into my first abeyance realm, what I do is I'll come over to this first site of power and I'll set up a little base here because you'll have a little quest thing here. You'll have an essence trader. Uh, you'll have, a you know, the person that you can recruit and you'll be able to actually go in here and do your mission. So definitely want to keep an eye out for any kind of structures that look like these or other types of sites of power, because like I said, they're going to be tied to your progression overall. Now, if you are working on trying to build a base, what you can do is when you go to place down different items and structures, they will not automatically just take your materials or something like that. So what you can do is it'll actually give you like a layout type system. So you can actually place these down. It does, you don't have to have the materials on you or anything like that. You can just kind of do this, build it however you want. And then, you know, if you don't like it, you, you tear it down, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Your helper will definitely like fill it as you're trying to build it. If he has access to your boxes with material materials that it's needed to build in it. So make sure you keep that in mind. But you can go through and build to your heart's content, change it how you want, and then afterwards, once the layout is the way you want it, then you can actually fill up the materials there. Now in the same aspect, if you hit V, I think, or no, X, my bad. If you hit X, uh, you have your little option menu here pop up. This will give you the ability to copy, move, and remove, and so forth. So what you can do is, I mean, you can get rid of structures. You can actually go into your base if you want and take something like a, but even a bo if a, a box is full, you can even move that box. So you can just drag it over here, drop it over there. It'll still have the items inside of it. So really, really important menu for when you're moving stuff around and trying to, you know, resituate yourself there. Of course, this is a survival game, so you'll be picking up a lot of materials and, you know, gathering and so on and so forth. As you're starting the game, you'll be gathering by hand, of course. And you will see that you get a couple here and there, you know, nothing too, too big. But you, what you want to do is make sure you utilize the tools that you have, like something like the scythe that you can craft. Even the starting out scythe, you will get a little bit more from utilizing it. You might get some drops like essence dust like that, and it will definitely help speed things along. The more and the higher, the better, the better tools that you have. So make sure you're using the tools that you have at hand. Now, if you're looking at your realm cards and you are working on like a multiplayer game or something like that, it is important to note that in order to, you know, allow somebody in to your estate or whatever it is you're trying to do, you can make a card for them and drop it on the ground. You can do that with any of the different cards that you find and so forth. I haven't seen any kind of restriction on how many cards you can have or anything like that. So if you want to take the card, you can just drop it. It'll drop it on the ground and they can just come over here and pick it up. Really, really important if you're trying to help your friends out or they're trying to help you out or whatever the case is there. Now, if you find a note out in the wild, no matter what it is, and you see a red icon on there, it'll usually tell you what kind of tool that you need to harvest it. Of course, it will have a, this one's a zero, but it will have a level of the tool restriction on it as well. So if you find it and you don't have the right tool or whatever the case is, you might have to go and, you know, find something different. Even some of the earlier realms, you'll find some with like, much higher numbers to them it's like a more special type of resource so you'll know you'll know if you can actually harvest it because if you switch to your item and then you look you know go back to it that's the wrong actual tool now that i look at it let me sorry let me put that on so if you put your tool back on and you uh look at the slot again you can obviously see it goes from red to green that way you know that you can actually harvest it without any kind of problem Another really, really important one to keep and be mindful of is while you're holding E on these, or sorry, while you're opening their menus, not holding E on them, you'll have an option down here for container permissions. Whatever you put in the box, and if you tick this box, your survivor or your helper, they will be able to access the materials on there pretty much at free will. So you don't want to put that on every single box or anything like that because if let's say you have a box that actually I think I have it all on me right now. Yeah, I do. So if I had a box just full of different woods, right, and gave the NPC permission to that box, if they wanted to fill the fires on the different, you know, like the, the campfire or anything like that to be able to ignite it and craft and so forth, they will throw any type of wood or whatever the case is into that uh, bench. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you're utilizing them to like fill different things or build and so forth, that they only have access to like a box that you put like basic materials in or, you know, 
whatever you're trying to utilize them for don't allow them permissions the boxes that have like more rare resources in it or stuff that you're trying to save for something because you'll kind of come back and they'll be kind of disappearing and gone of course you'll quickly learn that you will need the things called essences in order to actually repair your gear or to progress through different sections of the game the basic essence is pretty simple. You can get that in your band's realm or pretty much anywhere, no matter what you really do. You can just throw rocks into the trash or sticks or whatever, and you will get essence. Now, starting out, one of the easiest ways that I've found doing that is if you, you know, leave your base or whatever, and you have some extra rocks laying around, what you can do is craft them into some uh, rock marble ammo. It's a pretty good conversion rate. They take a little while to craft, but as you come back, they have a pretty good conversion rate. It does seem like it's a two to one type ratio. And of course, you know, there's plenty of other decent ones too. Like, you know, getting plant fiber and such is pretty, pretty quick with the scythe or sickle, sorry, and so forth. So you can, you can pretty much do it with whatever you need and get what you need out of that. A quick note is if you are looking to repair your structures or whatever the case is, you know, if you got attacked by something or you know whatever the case is there you will need a hammer to do so if you don't have the pattern you need to find it or go to one of the essence traders and so forth there but you just it's kind of like any other survival game you equip it you, you hammer on the item and it repairs it pretty simple now the companions are actually really really helpful and really handy to have they can be kind of silly of course their ai is the top of the line but like I said, at the first sight of power, you'll be able to get one of them pretty pretty early on. But you want to utilize their inventory as best as possible. So they don't really have a weight limit. So they have, you know, just the inventory slots. So you can make them carry your heavy items or, you know, so on there. And of course, if you, depending on what weapon you give them to equip, they will actually help you like mine or chop down trees or so forth. They're, they're a little finicky with that currently at this state. But... You know, you do want to also make sure that you're leveling up their gear and weapons and so forth with your own because they will be helping you fight. They will be helping you harvest, you know, they will be accompanying you throughout the entire time. But basically, all you got to do is literally take a piece of gear. If you have one, drag it over here, right click on it, equip. Really, really simple there, too. Same thing with weapons. Now, this game is definitely all about the exploring, the, the magical realms, the mysticism behind everything, and so forth. Your map, obviously, will be pretty blank starting out. However, there will be some points of interest on your map. There are a lot more smaller points of interest that will not be shown on your map. They're just kind of little things that, as you're exploring, you'll, you'll find something as simple as, like, this, right? So if you go to these, you'll see certain maybe like extra mushrooms or special flowers or you might find a uh, an echo there that you can grab that'll give you a recipe or, you know, you might even find some already crafted like materials that's kind of laying around or even a chest. Some of them will have walls that kind of look like these or little structures that look like these that will have cracks or something through them. You can pull out your tool and you can break them down. And the, a lot of the times there'll be something hidden behind those walls. So you want to make sure you're looking around. If you see anything that looks out of the ordinary, there's probably going to be something in that vicinity. Now, as I was saying earlier, you want to try to get to the first site of power because that's where the essence trader and such is. The essence traders are really, really important. One of the first things you should get if you didn't find one already is the simple umbrella. This will allow you to like slow fall and kind of get around different areas a lot better, especially if you're getting attacked a lot or anything of that sort. However, the essence is basically the progression of the game. Now, there's different types of essences, different quality essences, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you will get the basic one, like I said, pretty much anywhere. Now, looking for the next tier or the tier one essence, you'll have to get that after finishing your first side of power and you'll get like a new realm and so forth. And you'll be able to go there. You'll be able to start finding it more from doing puzzles or just exploring or whatever it is you're doing in that realm. You'll tend to find it. Make sure you're exploring and doing a lot of stuff too because you'll find a lot of pockets of POIs and all, all that kind of stuff with, that will have a lot of it. Now, after you do that, the first thing you're going to be able to unlock is one of your upgrade benches. The upgrade benches are going to be really important throughout the entire span of the game. But the first thing you want to do and look at is you want to look at items that you can upgrade to increase their gear level and such that 
you can equip in both your hands because your gear score is dependent on what you have out in your hands at the time. So if you have something that goes in each slot of your main hand and offhand and you level them up, they will give you a bump to your, your gear score or your item level or whatever you want to call it. So one of the first things that you'd want to hit if you can is the spyglass that you are able to get because the spyglass starts at I think like level 40 or something of the sort. So just getting it after that side of power and so forth and getting the upgrade bench, that one will give you your biggest jump in your uh, equipment rating. Sorry, not gear score or item level. So that'll be your first direct jump is starting to do that. And then as you level up your other gear and such, it'll bring up your gear score. You'll unlock more sites of power and kind of continue from there. Now, I do believe the T1 essence can be found in like the um, ant I I can't even remember the name of it. Whatever the ant realm is, provision and astrolabe uh, realms, if I can recall correctly. Uh, T2, I believe, was from hunt and gloom and herbarian realms. Uh, I'm not 100% if that was all of them or not. T3 is definitely, it's like the purple essence. That one is definitely the end game stuff. You will need ascended realms and that's, you know, down the line for you to deal with. Now, we're not going to get into any of that kind of stuff right now. As I said, essence traders are really, really important. They are pretty much in any, of, well, not any of the realms, but they're pretty much in all different realms. And each individual one can definitely, ooh, that was a rubber band. Each individual one can actually have uh, different recipes and materials there. So you want to make sure you, you check each one of them. Now, if you're looking to craft something in specific and you want to keep track of the materials that you need on the fly, of course, like I said, this menu will look a little bit different on the launch version of the game. You can easily go to your crafting book or whatever you want to pages, and you can actually just go to one of the items, right click on it, and it'll be actively tracked over here so you know what you're looking for at all times. Another important note about realms and multiplayer is that realms do not scale based off of how many people are in them. So you will have to control the realm's power and change the, the difficulties and such, depending on if there's more people or however you see fit. But just keep in mind, they don't scale actively like that. All right, now this is actually on the new build of the game that you will be seeing at launch. You can already see that the UI looks a lot different. They redid all of that. They redid a whole bunch of other stuff that I'll be covering more into the other video here. But this one is going to talk about, well, this section of the video is going to talk about the different F buttons and such that you can assign or that are assigned. Before you could use this, you could see the keybinds with F1. However, you don't need to do that anymore. You can see them here. You can rebind them however you choose. Uh, F2 will actually bring up a lot more in-depth game information for you and you can utilize that however you choose. It will also do a screenshot because I, I believe F2 is like a bug screenshot type of thing for the devs in case you need more information. Uh, F3 um, brings up your, sorry, your ping and your FPS in the top left up there. F4 will hide your HUD still. F5 will actually put you back into first person or third person mode. Now, as you can see, the UI here is a little bit different. You don't have your equipable items up here. Now, if you want to equip items and such, you literally can just drag and drop, just like you could with like essences and such during down here. But yep, just dragging and dropping will be there for you to actually utilize now. Now, this is one of their newer things that they've added to the game. This is the Realmic Transmuter. You can find that on your map. Usually, it'll, it'll just say Realmic Transmuter. This allows you to play the minor, quote unquote, cards to your realms. Now, some of them are pretty much just simply minor cards. However, majority of them are really not so minor and are really, really important. So what this thing allows you to do is you come here and you can pick any of the cards that you found that are minor cards at any time. Uh, so let's see, we're going to pick, let's see, what do we have here? This one decreases ca or the time of crafting and so forth. Uh, or wait, no, that's what I have on currently. Let's see, what is, what's this one? Uh, let's see. This one allows you to move faster, improve resistance, most from damage, and while reducing the damage you deal. Okay, what about this one? All right. This one makes everything not great if i remember right 
The realm is plunged into eternal night, greatly increasing the yield of Bound's resources, but dealing consistent damage to you over time. Ooh. Cloaked in red fog with an atmosphere of evil. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I want to do that one. What's this one? Improve your resistances. Wait, is that the one I just did? For long effects of meals. Increase yield of crafted ammunition and ingots. Also really cool. What's the quarry one? Uh, increase stone yield. Reduce the time needed to refine stone products and improve the quality of stone items. All right. So, this one is move more quickly, leap safely to great heights. This one's really, 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 really handy. So let's do the crazy looking one. Just because. Goodbye, world. Welcome. Did they- Oh, goodness! They don't mess up- Oh, God! They didn't- They just right out the gate! Wow! I haven't actually seen this, uh, this card being played. Like I said, this is, uh... Okay. This... Oh, wow, you really do just take constant damage, don't you? Wow. Look at that. Of course, the biggest tip of this game is to enjoy the environments, enjoy everything that they've designed, because they have put some insane work into all different aspects of the game. That is crazy. Wow. Okay. Sorry. That just, that took me by surprise how cool that was. All right, we're going to throw the other one on real quick. Oh, of course, if you hit tab, you can actually see your buffs and debuffs. I didn't actually mention this earlier. You can see your buffs, debuffs, what they do, how, like, so on and so forth there. The, like I said, the UI is different on the newest build, so, you know, it'll look different on launch. But, uh, let's, let's, uh, taking constant damage, frigid cold. Maximum health is greatly reduced. Oof. Let's, let's see some salve real quick when we do this. All right. Let's do the Thin Veil card. Goodbye, cruel world. Now, this card is particularly handy whenever you're trying to move around your realms. This one allows you to jump in a much higher uh, height, and it allows you to have slow fall. It allows you to kind of glide even without an umbrella. The umbrella will help as well, but it allows you to move and kind of just jump and traverse a lot better. So that is the uh, Realmic Transmuter, and that's that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all very, very much for dropping by. And again, thank you very much to Inflection Games for being as awesome as they have always been. Hopefully you guys can drop a follow or watch some of the stream or anything of the sort or subscribe to any of the channels or YouTube or whatever you want to do. It would be great. And without that, or separate from that, I will bid you all adieu. I will see you all in the next video where I try to cover some of the stuff from the actual new build of the game. And you guys have a good one.